All right. So let me introduce to contract driven testing. This is just a mind blowing thing. So wouldn't it be great if we could keep our backend engineers in sync with what we do all the time? Wouldn't it be great if whenever they introduce a breaking change, they actually cannot push that code and they have to come to us to renegotiate the contract between the front end and the back end? Well, it is possible through contract driven testing. So what you can do is, um, the, the idea is very simple. The idea is that you create, you, so I don't know how is it in your organization. In our uh, company, we have uh, cross-functional teams like the proper scrum approach. And then of course the front end and the back end and a bunch of other people are in the same team. They all create the same product. Um, they all create features They work together like a team. So what we do typically is that we have to agree on a contract between the front end and the back end. So what we do is we take one front end and one back end and then we discuss the type of endpoint we want to be making in order to make that feature. And then the front end, um, let's say, creates a contract. That contract is created through an uh, integration test. When we create that contract, now the backender has to meet that contract. Um, so how to do it? Well, you can use a tool that I absolutely love, and it's called Pact. Um, go ahead and head to docs.pact.io. Just Google Pact for developers. You will find plenty of good stuff. I think this is an amazing tool, um, and I think like, I can't imagine working without it, to be honest. And when you sign up for the for the plan, like they, they offer so much good stuff for you. But um, just check it out yourself. That makes a lot of sense. I use it. I love it. So there is a lot of explanation of how these things work and what you should be doing, what you should not be doing. What I did is I just installed a couple of packages. So the thing you really want to install is um, you want to install the Pact Foundation stuff. So you want to install the Karma Pact integration package. You want to install Pact for Node. And you want to install Pact for Web. So each one doing separate things, but generally the idea is very simple. It will help you to mock and stab and do all kinds of stuff with your backend services. So how it works? Well, you need to configure it. So after you've installed this through npm install, you want to head into the karmaconf.js and then add a couple of things to that. First of all, in the frameworks, you want to add the pact. Then you also want to do the plugin, the Karma Pact one you just installed. And then you also want to um, set up a Pact uh, property in, in the configuration where you're going to tell it like that you want to support cores, on what port you want to be running, what is a consumer, what is the provider. I'm not going to go much into the detail about it, you can read it on the Pact website. But generally think about it, a consumer is a front-end application that makes calls. Um, the provider is someone that provides you with the data. And when consumer consumes a data from the provider, it needs to adhere to the, to the contract. That contract is stored in a, you know, various different ways. We use the Pact Broker. Uh, that is a cloud solution already provided by, uh, by Pact and it's working pretty good. Then you may, you don't have to, but it's a good practice to set up the logging. You also tell in which directory and then there is a specification. They have different versions of the specification. We use the version 2 for now. All right. So once you set it up, um, you need to go ahead and start making those calls. So the first thing I like to do is to create a stop. 
I will get to the discussion of what a stub is versus mock versus spy versus test doubles and all those kind of buzzwords, but this is not the purpose of this video. So when you head in here, you will see this is a GitHub. So I still think there is a bit, uh, there is a lot of value in contract driven testing, and we still use Pact for the external calls. Um, just because sometimes the APIs change and we use it sort of as a monitoring tool. But let's imagine that this, this GitHub API is something we build in our own uh, company. So this get all user stop.json is really a stop. This is like the meat of the response uh, from, from the GitHub API. There we can go and create uh, a couple of things. Um, so what you need to do, you need to create this sort of a provider. This represents the mock API. Then we can use the packed web in which we also provide some configuration that in this specific test, because now I'm in the context of user service aspect.ts, I want to support course, I want to contact on the mock server that runs on 8100. Um, let me double check that. The, the port can be anything, yeah, it, but it has to match one of these. So here we can provide multiple configuration of the providers. The, the consumer is always the same, this is your app. And then the provider can change, but um, in, in this case, we just consider only a single provider. Um, and then the same, the, like the login and the specs. Now, um, some people recommend to do it. I technically don't really like it, but I leave it, uh, yeah, I don't know. Program to remove it. And then what it does is that before all, it also makes sure that the provider it's removing all the interactions. It's because you want to start with a clean slate. So it's sort of like a setup of your of your of your mock server. Now before each is all the same. You're still gonna make uh, the service through the configuration testing module in Angular. Then after all, what you wanna do is to finalize uh, your provider. The idea here is that, you know, you it will make sense in a second, but generally think about it like, this is checking if all what I expected was actually called. Um, because sometimes you might say, oh, I expect a call to get the users, but you never really reach it. But when you finalize it, the part will actually check it and say, oh, you're actually missing some interactions. Um, and then, this is a bit of a technicality, uh, I strongly recommend you uh, create a separate described block for each single method uh, that you want to call. There is a couple of reasons to do that for now, just, just think about that you need to do it. And then uh, you go before all, you can also call before each, but the idea is simple. What you want is to create an uh, interaction on the provider. Interaction is really telling the provider your mock server, telling it, hey, if you get this request, exactly this request, you want a response with this response. All right, so it's very simple, but very powerful. So you want to tell it, if you get exactly this request, you want to respond with this response. There is a couple of pretty advanced features like state providers, so this is like to prep your state in your in your providers. We don't care for it uh, about it uh, for now. Then you have some human readable messages, and then then is the actual thing. So you say with this request, which represents get slash users, will respond with the status two hundred, and then the with the body that matches. And this is the imported JSON. I I have saved in my stub folder. Um, this can be a lot more sophisticated than it is here, but I just want to keep it simple for you. And then we say, okay, it should call get all, the same thing as we were doing before. So after I call this, and technically I know, sorry, I know how many requests I have here, and I believe, I'm not sure how many of it is, but I think it's about 10. So let's say that the length of the user I'm getting is to equal 
Uh, I think it's 10, but I'm going to fail it on purpose. I'm going to say 5. Now, now we're going to see something very interesting. Um, when I call this, what happens is that because I set it up, so the Karma now creates a mock server. This is from the karma.conf uh, uh, kind of file. Now we know the park server is running, the karma spawning, uh, the window with the browser. You can go uh, headless, of course. Um, and here the karma is up, the, the, the server is there. Um, and listens to actually get the interaction. And here we go, we pass all the tests. And then what really happened? I mean, I was supposed, like, I was expecting this to fail. Well, yeah, the thing is, you didn't really make that call. So, why you didn't make that call? And so it says that, you know, should call get all has no expectations. So, this is super weird, like, why not? So, there are a couple of reasons, but I'm gonna show it this to you in the next video.